Mr. Spencer has always been a hoarder for as long as he remembered. He loved antiques more than anything else in the world. Vintage books, watches, coins, busts, cabinets and dressers. He was also a fan of oil paintings and human portraits in particular. With each day he owned more and more of that stuff. On yet another walk, he decided to drop by the local flea market as usual. Walking along the noisy roads and not finding anything interesting, he was ready to return home. But a lonely salesman caught his interest. More precisely, it was what this man was selling. A portrait. A female portrait. She was drawn very vividly and realistically, as if a living woman was looking at him from behind the frame. She looked a little over 25 years old. A big forehead, a heavy look, and unusually lively eyes that seemed to be looking at you. Straight dark hair went down beyond the frame of the painting. There was something in this portrait that attracted him, and he was ready to pay any price for it. It was a little creepy and even scary, and clearly did not claim to be of antique value, but still, somehow, it caught the eye. Without noticing it, Mr. Spencer was already standing next to this man and holding this portrait in his hands. The man gave the portrait and did not ask for money. He just nodded in gratitude, looked back at the portrait in a strange way and left it quickly. Mr. Spencer stood with the portrait in his hands in the noisy flea market. And then, apparently, when he realized that he had received the portrait for free, he was pleased to go home. The portrait looked good only in the bedroom. Besides, there was almost no space on the walls anywhere else. Already at night, before going to bed, Mr. Spencer felt someone's eyes on him. At half-lights, the frame of the picture was not visible, and he mistook the portrait for a person standing next to the wall. There was something alive in that painting. Moreover, the hand's position seemed to have changed. Wait a minute, what hands? There were no hands in the picture. Or did I forget? Well, I guess I'm just exhausted, thought Mr. Spencer laying down and then fell asleep. The next day the portrait was still hanging on the wall and the experienced collector could not remember whether there had been hands before or not. Well, of course there have been hands before. They could not have appeared later, the old collector thought again. In the evening, Mr. Spencer was going to bed. He walked past the portrait as usual, and suddenly he noticed that the eyes of the portrait seemed to be watching him. They were clearly following him, moving from side to side. Mr. Spencer tumbled for a long time and could not fall asleep, thinking about how it was possible and whether it was his imagination. Then he took sedatives and fell asleep. The next night, the portrait was still looking at him without taking her eyes off. Mr. Spencer began to think he was going crazy. When he decided to go to bed, he looked at the portrait again. The horror changed his body. His breathing ceased and his heart was ready to jump out of his chest. It wasn't the girl who was looking at him from the portrait anymore, but a terrible smiling face. He decided to get up and cover it with cloth, or put it on the floor, and in the morning he would put it in the storeroom so it could not scare him again like that. He was just about to get up when he saw the portrait move. The woman's hands, which were now folded on the chest, straightened up and creeped out of the picture. Fear chained him up. It was so terrible and crazy that he could not get up from his bed. The hands were still reaching for him. They reached out so far that they were already getting at his ankles. They stretched across the entire room, right to his feet. 
The skinny hands grabbed him by the legs. He was scared to death, felt burning pain and fainted. And the hands dragged him into the picture and the old collector disappeared in the darkness of the terrifying portrait. <laughs> there was an old well near grandparents' house, but as long as I can remember, no one drew water from there, neither 10 years ago, nor 20. Even my grandfather said that there had been no water ever. My grandma scared us by saying that there was a hag in the well. We laughed at it for a long time with my brother Max. She once told us a terrible story about this well. This house was built by my grandfather back in 1952. My grandparents got married and moved to this new house and my grandfather dug a deep well, since there was no plumbing. But he didn't get to the water. He said it was flagstone and let the digging go. The well was nailed down till better days and water was drawn from a public water pump next to the house. One day, somebody started pulling out the boards from the well at night. Moreover, it was pulled out from the inside. Then, someone stole chickens and even ship. Grandfather refused to believe in hacks and did not fill in the well, hoping that water would appear soon. And one night, or should rather say already in the morning, Grandma saw the very creature that climbed out of the well. It had pale skin, looked very thin, a bag of bones, and with huge fingers. Based on the description, it was very similar to the so-called rake. The well hadn't been filled in for many years, but it was nailed down with oak plants this time. Grandparents died and that something in the well was forgotten. My father, for some reason, did not know these stories at all. Then that house became something like a summer vacation spot for us. And one summer, I don't know how it popped into our heads, me and Max decided to take a look at this creature in the well with our own eyes. Of course, we did not believe in any hacks and we laughed over it but we wanted so bad to capture a real rake on film. That day, we asked our parents to spend the night outside in a tent. My father supported the idea of a sleepover outside, though my mother was against it. In the yard we turned on a dim old lamp, so we could see at least something. My brother snatched a piece of meat to entice the creature. Night fell. When our parents turned the lights off in the house, we put a piece of raw meat on the boards and got into the tent. Nothing had been happening for almost two hours. Max had finished his pack of chips and was already asleep, missing a chance to see the monster, and I barely kept my eyes open. Suddenly, I heard the noise of the sliding boards. I was numbed with terror. I couldn't breathe. I had to wake my brother, but I was afraid to move. Having braced myself up, I overcame my fear and shook him from sleep. I put my finger on my lips to shush him and pointed to the old well. Max looked at me with his eyes wide open. We tried not to breathe, although the breathing and the heart beating seemed very loud to us. Having heard nothing else, my brother threw his hands up and whispered what the hell I had woken him up for nothing. I said that I heard the noise of the sliding boards at the well. He didn't believe me and suddenly jumped out of the tent. I wanted to grab his pants, but I didn't. I shivered in my boots, but then I got out of our shelter. I didn't see Max anywhere, and I started panicking. Then he scared me from behind and exploded with laughter. He didn't believe that I heard something, and he went straight to the well. The meat wasn't there anymore. Max accused me of hiding the meat and wanting to scare him. And to prove that he wasn't afraid of anything and didn't believe me, he decided to look into the well. I tried to talk him out of it, but he was determined. He moved aside all the boards 
and looked inside. He throws. I asked him why he wasn't talking, but he wasn't answering. Now I thought he was kidding me, and I came near the well and looked inside too. There was something at the bottom of the dark well. Something was sitting there and chewing a piece of meat. I was afraid even to scream. But my brother was standing still and was looking down. I screamed. My father turned on the lights in the house and ran out with a flashlight into the yard. I pointed to the well and my father ran there. When he switched on the flashlight and lit the bottom of the well, he saw Max lying there. He was rescued. He broke his arm and was in rough shape. He had scratches all over him. Max was very lucky that he didn't die. Our father did not pay attention to our words and was very angry. He said that Max simply fell down there because of his boyish foolery and said that he would fill in the well the next day and there were no rakes. He did fill in the well. Perhaps the well was somehow connected with the local caves and that's how the creature came to the surface, I guess. But we saw it. It exists. Maybe it's called something else in other places, but it was him. It was Rake, and we remembered it for the rest of our lives. Hi everybody, it's another day, which means another vlog. Well, I'll start by saying that last night, when Karen and I went for a walk, we saw a strange animal on the street. It looked like a cat, but a bit weird one. I even filmed a video for those who don't believe me. I'll put it out later. Then Karen called this cat, and when it came to us, we were utterly speechless. It was some kind of a freak, not a cat. Maybe it was sick, that's why it looked like that. I decided to chase it away, but that bastard bit me. Damn, it burns and itches. We went straight to the hospital. I got an injection, rabies shot, I guess. I don't know. I think I'll get well tomorrow. In the meantime, I have a fever and I hope I'll see you all soon. My head still hurts, arm is still itchy and there's some weird bump on the bite. I don't know what it is. I haven't shown it to my mother yet. I think we have to go to the hospital again. Today I'm going to live stream for you one more time, but not about my hand. I'm waiting for Karen, and then we'll go to the hospital. See you tomorrow. Hi everyone. Apparently I contracted something from the cat. My head hurts all the time. My hand itches unbearably. Today we've been to the hospital. The doctor was at a loss. The tests were good. He said they could put me in a hospital for a couple of days. Well, we got out of there. Since the tests are good, I think I'll get well soon. They also anointed my hand with something and said that it will get better in a couple of days. Hello guys. Today I'm with Karen. She will help me because I feel very weak. Show them your hand. Well, here it is. It's terrifying. Oh, you have something on your neck here. Look! Damn, it's weird. Turn off the camera. Hi everybody, I'm replacing Max today. You're all asking what happened to Max and how it's going. He can't get up. 
takes a lot of pills, and he's all pale. He's lying there behind me. He asked me to vlog instead of him, to keep you informed. I'll tell you briefly what happened in the last two days. Last night, Max came down, and that bump started appearing all over his body. And at night, they all disappeared completely. Max even got up, and I thought he was okay, and we would vlog. But I saw his mad eyes. And then he jumped out on the street and started chasing pigeons like crazy. And when he caught one, he, um, well, he ate it. Our latest videos are gaining millions of views, but guys, it's not fake, delusional, or fantasy. There's something wrong with him. My mom and I even took his cat away because he wanted to eat it too. M Max? Huh? Someone or something was knocking on the door, but then there was complete silence, and I heard a familiar voice of our neighbor. She asked me to open the door, and said that she came to ask for some salt. I looked through the peephole. It really was Mrs. Baker standing there. I would recognize her kind look and constant smile from a mile away. I opened the door with my shaking hands, looked around and asked her if she had seen a woman in a green dress in the stairwell. She laughed and said it was a little early to date at my age. I went to the kitchen for salt and asked Mrs. Baker to come inside. I was still afraid that this crazy woman was standing there. But Mrs. Baker refused to come in, saying that the meat should be put in the oven as soon as possible. When I came back with the salt, there was no one there and the door was open and squeaking. I quickly closed the door and thought that if Mrs. Baker needed salt, she would come back and knock again. She must have forgotten something on the stove and ran back. Fear began to retreat a little bit and I went back to the kitchen to put the salt in place. As I approached the kitchen, I saw a black silhouette. At first, I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, but no, there was someone standing by the window. The light in the kitchen started flashing, and I was very scared and couldn't move anymore. Based on the body shape and clothes, I realized it was Mrs. Baker, but she stood there saying nothing. You like to look in other people's windows, don't you? Huh? I immediately covered in cold sweat, and fear chained my body. I was just about to run out to the stairwell, when her tenacious thin hands caught me. But I escaped, and ran to the nearest room, the bedroom. I locked myself in the room, but she kept breaking in. I was praying that to be a dream, for all that to stop right now. And then, suddenly, there was silence. I heard the steps in the stairwell. Someone came into our apartment. Sunny, why is the door open? It was my mom. Mom came home from the shift. I was saved. I ran towards her in tears and couldn't say anything. She hugged me and asked me what had happened. Why was I crying and shaking? And I was just whimpering on her shoulder and couldn't say a word. That's how much I was scared. Late at night, when I was coming back home from my friends and walking past the cafe, I realized I was hungry. I had a growling stomach and I immediately went in. 
was 2 a.m. The burger joint was still open, but there was no one inside. There was a sleepy girl at the cash register. She asked me what I would have, but I said I'd use self-order station, and she left dissatisfied. I made an order and sat down waiting for my food. At that moment, a man in an old jacket with a black hood came in. Because of the dark hood, I couldn't see his face and it scared me even more. He was standing at the entrance looking somewhere. My number came up on the screen and the sleepy girl took out a tray of my burger and fries. I was about to go get it when this crazy man stood right in my way and kept whispering something. There was nowhere to go and I went straight to him. I had to literally squeeze through. When I was in his immediate vicinity, he whispered with his husky voice in my ear, I'm hungry, hungry. Fear began to retreat a little. I realized that the man is just hungry and a little weird in appearance. And I decided to buy an extra cheeseburger for him. Having received a tray, I went to him in the hope that he would take the cheeseburger. But when I handed him the tray, he threw it away and attacked me. The food scattered over the floor. I heard the cashier scream, and then I saw this ugly face covered in pimples and boils. He was sitting on me and yelling to my face that he was hungry, not some beef or chicken. He wants to eat human body, like mine, young and fresh. At that time, I was very scared for my life and almost lost it. I couldn't throw him off of me. That's how strong and heavy he was. That's when I saw the red and blue lights and heard the sirens. The cashier called the police and the madman stood up for me and ran out the door, where he was rounded up by a couple of top guys from the police. Then I found out on TV that he was a cannibal maniac who had been hiding for seven years and finally went mad and attacked a man in a cafe. One day, a boy got lost in woods. He walked for a long time and called for help. And after all, he lost all hope for rescue. And suddenly, he saw something. He could not believe his eyes. It was an old house there was a dim light inside. He went in. A little candle was burning and dimly illuminating the room. There was a bed and a table. The boy laid down on the bed without hesitation. He was so tired. When he got used to the dim light, he could see what was on the walls. There were pictures of creepy faces of strange people. Some creatures that looked alive and seemed to be looking at him. The boy could not sleep for a long time. So frightening were these portraits. But in the end, Fatigue took its toll. He closed his eyes and fell asleep. The next morning, he opened his eyes to the bright light. Terror gripped him from top to toe, 
as he looked up at the walls. What he had seen yesterday was not pictures at all. It was windows.